Good day, my name is Tony Silva, and I have a great honor today of having Josie visiting us. Josie works for CARI, which is the Hagen Agricultural Research Institute in Canada. Mark and I met in 1985 when he visited a, uh, when he came to Chicago to attend a convention on nutrition, and it was 85, 1986. We have maintained a strong friendship during all these years. But I was never privileged, I never had the opportunity to use their formula until about six, eight months ago. And we had lots of offers to try different products. And I thought, you know what? Mark is like me, he is a perfectionist. He's not easy to get along with because he has such a high standard. So I said, yes, you know what? I will try it. And Josie has had a lot to do with it, and that's why she's here. So when I looked at the formula, I looked at three main points. One, did it, did, did it separate? Most formulas, when you have water, the solids sink, the water comes to the top. People tend, in their rush to feed babies, pull up what's at the top, feed that. So the first chicks are getting a concentration of water, and the last chicks are getting a concentration of formula. So that was a problem. Secondly, was it easy to digest? Did it go through them quickly, like it would when the parents feed them, where everything digests smoothly? And third, which was very important, did it have sugars that would induce meat? And we checked, and there was no yeast. So I thought, wow, you know, in my, in my obsession to take care of my birds, I had overlooked a great product. And, um, you know, I would like to ask Josie to give a, a brief description of how the products came to be and the research that they have done uh, to get to this day. And, you know, this is the product. It's easy to store. The formula is this appetizing color. And uh, it, uh, the ingredients are here. Uh, it is very special. It's something that is available. It is uh, reasonably priced. And people often say, well, I would like to make up my own formula to save money. You're really not saving money. It's better to get something that is tested, that is verified, that meets the nutritional requirements of these chicks. So tell us a little bit about how this came to be. Well, definitely, I'm most, uh, very honored to have you have this discussion with me. And, and the most important point that you first mentioned when you evaluated the food, and only an experienced agriculturist would, would have this uh, observation is that the food doesn't separate out. And this has always been the most important and challenging nutritional goal when formulating the diet. And it has a lot to do with the gelatinization process that happens, but it also has to do with the technology and the equipment that we use to actually manufacture. Let me just stop you. I tried the formula with both warm water yeah. and with cold water. Yes. And it, 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 it dissolves beautifully. It mixes, yes. And, and this is something in the industry that over the past 15, 20 years, now that there's these new generations of hand feeding formulas that have very high digestible enzymes in them, and, and the whole formulation is very digestible, as you also mentioned. This doesn't require us to use the elevated temperatures that we used to have to be obliged to mix in our hand feeding formula in the past. Well, you're cooking. You're actually cooking exactly. the Exactly. So, so we can get away with feeding our birds at a lower temperature compared to in the 1980s when we were using uh, high temperatures of 105, 108, 109, because back in the days, these new generations of hand feeding formulas were not there. It was monkey chow mixed with orange juice and some vitamins and a little bit of witchcraft there trying to get it perfectly right. Uh, what's, what's so important is we've had the privilege over 30 years now of feeding exclusively our extruded diets, both the granules and the hand feeding formula to our chicks. And, and over the years, the analysis that we've made is not, as we were mentioning before, it's not just a question of uh, daily weight gain. There's definitely a 10% optimal weight gain that we're looking for during the growth phase of the chicks. But we've also been observing and, and recording all of the growth characteristics uh, that are essential to assess a diet that is actually optimal for growth. So that's feather structure, that is the uh, opening of the ears, the opening of, of the eyes, all the little subtle characteristics that we would be able to 
detect a, a, a very uh, preliminary stunting, a delayed growth. So if we're just weighing ourselves on the weight, the weight gain, then we can have very plump babies that are not developing ideally. But then what we want to do is we're not raising whirly chickens, as we were talking about before. We're raising birds that need to have optimal hepatic health. We don't want them to accumulate the fat, because that's like, you know, women getting to be almost 50, I mean, it's really hard to lose that belly fat. And when we know that babies gain the belly fat when they're young, this can compromise future breeding, future health. So there's, there's many, many different things. And then something that I noticed is those of us that feed macaw, yes. that feed galahs, rose-breasted cockatoos, as ever, endlessly hungry. Yes. So macaws tend to grab the edge of the container that they're in, and they pump, and then you deviate the mandible over the time. <laughs> I noticed that they seem Yes. There's this comfort food now. This this word has become bold throughout the world. Yes. It's comfort Satiety. food, and that's what I noticed that uh, they were they were calm, they were they were sleeping, and I want them to sleep. I want them to devote all this energy to growth yes. and not grabbing my attention, saying I'm starving, feed me, or in Galah screaming, screaming to the point where we have to wear um, <laughs> one of. Uh, to work yeah, in nursery. I have one of these here. <laughs> this thing. Oh, yeah. To be <laughs> able to, to tolerate them, the you sure. have to cover your ears. You know, so it's so those are important key. to mention that because a few key years point. back we had a discussion with a very known agriculturist that was questioning why we were raising all our babies together in bins and we had no issues with them uh, bopping strongly onto each other's beaks. And I have no fear of that. Uh, the only time in, in the past few years that we had to regrettably remove some of our key ingredients just for a, a few test trials that we were doing on a formulation, or in one particular incident, we had no accessibility to peanuts for a few weeks, and we tried a formulation with dressed peanuts, and, and we didn't have the same satieties. And the first thing that we noticed wasn't necessarily the abnormal weight gain. It was the satiety that was in They start pumping each other, and, yes. you know, with the last, they get so, so agitated that they'll dislocate a wing, they'll puncture exactly. a wing. And it's uh, not just the fat though, but it's often what is going to be contributing to the optimal gut motility. Yes. And that's something that you mentioned before, the importance of having hand feeding formula that doesn't separate up. But also very important and very critical is the healthy gut transit time, right. which is also going to you know, influence the society of the birds, how hungry they are. Uh, we do early parrot education with our birds. We, we, we educate our birds at a very young age to, to forage healthily and we never deprive them of food. But our birds are never hungry because they've reached satiety and they reach it with a very minimal amount of food. And, and we don't like birds that have huge crops that expand because then we'll get you know crop issues and we'll get descended crops and then it's going to lead to secondary candida infections and everything else. We want that crop to regress. So the birds can learn how to fly, and the birds can learn how to proceed and all their other education that they're going to do. And if we're dealing with birds that are going to have prolonged, prolonged co-op distension because we're feeding them a volume of food that is unnatural, then definitely that's something that's not going to be. And then, you know, I know there's lots of people that say hand feeding is unnatural, that you produce birds that are, that are humanized. And it's not the hand learning, it is, as you and I know, what follows the flock mentality. The flock mentality. And then one thing that, that you guys do that I think is really it's fantastic is that you produce an information sheet where the people can gauge the weight of their bird. Yes. They can they can they're getting some information that is based on trial and error, that is based on decades of experience, not someone on the internet that is only one bird and has become an overnight expert. Yes. You, know, you guys have many generations of these birds that you have bred. And that's important. That's really important. So, you know, I know that, that we've, gone, uh, we've gone long, but it's important to hold these <laughs> discussions. Um, I think that if you are looking at hand wearing, definitely um, look at the Tropic Hand. I think you will be impressed with the product. And that's what it looks like. And if you want good information, go to the Hagen uh, site, and where, where can they access this generally? The easiest way is the harry.ca website, you know, and this is... So it's Harry, H is in Harry, H A is in yeah, Anthony. And it's on all our products, so right. you can easily Harry. So it's, yeah. it's Harry, maybe... Hagen Alpha Cultural Research Institute. 
and then don't call us for to speak to Harry. He doesn't really exist. It's a long abbreviation. Yes, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good acronym for a good product. So even if you don't use their product and you want good, reliable information that has been tested over time, get print out their information. They have it on a lot of species, um, and I think it will make you uh, have a better pet have a better interaction with your bird, have a healthier relationship with your bird, and I think hopefully reduce the number of birds that end up going to a second island. So I thank you for visiting. And I thank you for inviting me. We're very privileged today. We're going to have a, a very important tour of your facility. Yeah. And, and the other important thing I wanted to say is that we're very grateful to have the collaboration over the years when we're trying to come up with new formulations to to be able to have collaborations from the most experts in the world and the agriculturists that have become the foundation of all the knowledge in this world. So it's very important that we continue. Thank you. And we will be there. The, the, our, our combined objective, our focus at the end of the road, is making sure that the birds are healthy, that they have a long life, and that they segue, whether it be to become a breeder or a pet, in the most optimum way. Thank you for visiting. Have a great day.